All right, baseball family, welcome back. As you know, for those of you who are involved in this extravaganza that we do every month, we are going to do our version of power rankings. We call them emoji tiers. Nobody cares who's number one, two, three, and four, and five by the number. We like to rank them in groups. It's more fun that way. It's easier to keep track of, and it's easier for you to remember. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you our emoji tiers. We call that, or that's what we call them, but they're basically our power rankings. Jumping in first, Brad is going to jump in. He's going to go. He's going to tell us who is in his diamond tier. He's at the top of the list. That's right. My diamond tier has the Orioles, Dodgers, Braves in no specific order. What? But that's who I have. The Dodgers have figured it out. They figured it out. That's all. That's what it comes down to. They are a complete team once again, and they are. I don't want to say they're the cream of the National League because I still feel like the Braves are better overall. But if the Braves fall off, it's going to be the Dodgers next. Brad. Brad. But I maintain, if they don't win the World Series this year, which I don't think they will, tear it down. Okay. All right, move over to mine because mine's different. Mine okay. also has the Orioles, the Braves, but it's going to jump in with the Rangers because that makes more sense. Okay, the the Rangers have done tremendous amount of of adjustment with their offense and their pitching. They've now brought them together. Everything's working in Texas now. I still maintain that Atlanta is the best team in baseball. 100% no questions asked, most well-rounded, most capable, uh, you know, Probably going to go the distance. If you had to pick, if I had to put money on it today, I'd say the Braves are going all the way. I did the do end. that actually. Did you know that? Today, you did it today. No, like last week. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I did. Oh, nice. Yeah, on the Braves. Well, the Braves, the Braves are the best team in baseball, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's why I did it. <laughs> okay. So you didn't put them in your, your diamond tier. I did. Oh, yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you, the inclusion of the Dodgers still makes such little sense to me when there are other teams out there that are better like the Rangers. I anyway. don't think the Rangers are, though. With with the Rangers proved to me that they can beat a team that actually has pitching that uh, that's a more balanced team than the Marlins. The Marlins got better at the at the deadline. Don't don't yeah. get me wrong. But that much better. sweeping the, the Marlins is something they should have done even before the trade deadline. I, I don't think that they got like that much better at the deadline. So I am. You don't think the Rangers got that much better at the deadline? You've seen how Max Scherzer has been this year. Yeah. Given yeah. the environment he's been in and in, in the in Queens. I don't care. He's Max Scherzer. He's Mad Max. He the environment mm. shouldn't affect him. We just spent the whole th first thirty minutes talking about how the environment affects. But all these some other guys. guys, it doesn't affect. And Max right. Scherzer, to me, is one of them. Max Scherzer right. was the guy who walked into the dugout after getting a pat on the back from Dave Robertson and said, don't touch me. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Max Scherzer is not affected by the environment because he is a crazy person. He is a crazy person. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> yes. All right. I'll get... All right. You make a really compelling argument there, Brad. <laughs> Uh, okay, move on right, to Brad. Move on. Brad, we're okay. gonna let Brad talk more because it's good when he talks. To... <laughs> Brad, tell us who's in your heart tier. I've got the Cubs, Rays, <laughs> Mariners, Rangers, Phillies, Blue Jays, Giants, Astros. Yeah. Now, again, no particular order. This is not. I'm not putting the Astros at the bottom. Not putting the Cubs at the top. It's just the order that they're on that they happen to fit. Anyway. Um, talked about the Mariners, how they're super hot right now. Got to put them back in the heart. Um, the Rangers, still very, very good. Sitting on top of the American League West, but the Astros are creeping up on them. They're only like a game back. Yeah. So that, it, to me, if the Rangers were diamond tier worthy, they would have more than a game on the Astros, who also have figured it out, it seems. So, yeah. you. Well, I'm looking at the standings, and it's two and a half in the – in the West right now. Two and a half? Okay. But still, I feel like they should have more than two and a half if they're going to be the Diamond. Because I feel the like... Mariners are only six back. Right? There's no room for more. 
They'd be they'd have a better record, Brig. The Rangers in did not have a stellar July. Bro, they're almost at 600. <laughs> five because they won so many games in May and June. Okay, or April and May. And three. The Rangers are seven and three in their last ten. And look at the Rays record, Brig. Are the Rays world beaters right now? No. There you go. You can't go off their record alone. You have to base it off how they played in July. Okay. I don't want to talk about this anymore. All right. (laughs) On to your heart tier, Brad. (laughs) Okay, fine. Let's talk about this some more. My heart tier also in no particular order. Brad, will you roll over to mine? I don't know how to do that yet. That's yours. Oh, I thought that was yours. Okay, cool. It's (laughs) remarkably similar, except the only difference is the Dodgers and the Rangers switch places. (laughs) You're right. (laughs) Wait, seriously, go back and let's see. Is that the only difference? No. Oh, okay. You've got the Giants in there. (laughs) We're just going to argue. All right. (laughs) Well, like you said, like we said at the beginning, fighting about emoji (laughs) tears. Yeah, we did. (laughs) I guess you're just going to get what we deliver, okay? The baseball family. We're going to promise you things, and it's going to happen. All right. Uh, The Giants, I, I I can't justify the Giants here because I think that they're on a streak right now, and I don't like streaks. So... Whether they're good or bad, I don't like them. But they are that good much. Squeegee. They are. <laughs> they are that much better than the D backs right now. That is a fact of life, and it is an uncomfortable and unfortunate fact. But I still like the D backs better than the Giants, and that's I wish why I they're. Did. That's why they're going to stay here for now. I think maybe at the end of this next month we, that might change, or it might go back to the way the world should be with the Diamondbacks creeping back above the Giants in the standings and uh, closing in on the Dohers. So we'll see. But that's why the D-backs are there. I think that they have had a product of a couple of really weird stints. That has been that I, the Dominic Canzone trade. I don't know why it feels like some crummy omen or something. Um, it could be. So the yeah. D-backs right now are one game over 500. They're four and a half back of the Giants, nine back of the Dodgers. Yeah, no, was, and they've they're two and eight in their last ten. Yeah, and I think that's in a row. that's a serious problem. But it's again, it's past the deadline. It's after the break. It's all those things. So I don't know. I I still hold out hope, which is why this is an emotion based system and not a numbers and purely data driven situation. <laughs> You're right. So that Brad can do what he wants and I can do mine. We can yell at each other. That's right. And all you right, can just Brad. throw all. The, and by the way, Brig, you can just throw all the rules out the window. We'll get there later. Yeah, oh, I will. I do. Actually. He did. I absolutely. love to do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My question mark here, I actually have the D-backs and the question mark here. That's fair. Along with the Marlins, Yankees, Brewers, Reds, Twins, Red Sox, and Padres. I so wanted to have the Reds in the heart tier, but like yeah. I'm so worried that what we saw from the Reds was just like a jolt of excitement and then they're going to be back who they cuz this is right now who they are is who they were at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Right? Like, they just had, like, a really good, like, 60 days or whatever. I'm really worried about that. Um, So I put them in the question marks because I'm not sure exactly who they are. The Yankees, I mean, you know. (laughs) I I don't need to say anything else about that. Anyway, uh, the Brewers, I'm not too sure about. They should have more games on the Reds the way they've been playing, but they don't. Twins, the AL Central leader, enough said there. The Padres played really well there for, well there for a few days and then ran into the Dodgers and forgot how to play baseball. So yeah. there's that. Um, that is really my question mark here. What about yours, Brig? Mine's remarkably similar. I don't know what is happening in San Francisco, which is why they're here instead of up a tier. Um, Brewers and Twins, even though they're leading their divisions, I'm just like, I don't care because it's the Central on both right. sides though so i'm like whatever i don't i don't have a lot of staying power faith in either of those teams right now once they go up against the more juggernaut uh divisions in the playoffs so we'll see what happens it's going to come down to seeding for those two teams and how they rank uh who they face and things like that even though they're very likely going to be the teams we see in the playoffs uh same with the padres the red sox 
Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, <laughs> cold. I don't know what to do with them. The Reds, I, I, this pains me to put them here. I hope, like you said, it wasn't a, a Ellie De La Cruz shot in the arm that's now come down. The Yankees are lucky to be here. Just plain old lucky to be here at this point. And I, I, I don't. I don't even want to mince words. I had to, I very, very nearly did not leave them in my question mark. I'm very disappointed. Wow. Yeah. Very disappointed. After the loss yeah. tonight, they're 58 and 55. Of course they are. Because why not lose to the White Sox? Yep. Why not? A team that doesn't feel like anybody should be losing to for the rest of the year, but we'll get there. Yeah, I don't understand. Okay. Are you are you good if I go to my thumb thumbs down? Oh, I would love that. Okay, I will go to my thumbs down tier. I have the Pirates, Nats, Cardinals, Royals, Angels, Rockies, Tigers, and Cleveland's baseball club. Yeah. Um. So I I feel like I have to justify the Angels a little bit. The Angels have been terrible since the trade deadline, which is funny because it's like they made those. They are like, okay, we're not going to trade Otani. We're going to make moves. We're going to go all in. We're rolling the dice. But, and and I said at the time, I was like, if you can get guys you think are really good for your team, why aren't you doing it at the beginning of the season? It's like, oh, uh, I don't want to say they have an issue with talent evaluation, but they are clearly worse than what they were <laughs> before the deadline. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it'll hold. I don't know if they're just going to tank the rest of the season because they're like that bad. But I, we talked about, issues with managers i think phil nevin is a big problem for that team i, I agree he's a good manager and i don't understand why they brought him back this year in hopes of having otani resign because i i i think he's more likely to resign if they fire him the last day of the season but yeah mm. not a good team overall not playing well it doesn't help help they don't have mike trout they don't have anthony rendon yeah. i'll give him a little bit of that but at the same time though uh, that team is not playing well um, I feel like everybody else is really self-explanatory. I wanted to stick to the three eight 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 three, <laughs> so that's why I have the Royals in the th- in the thumbs down instead that. of the poop. Yeah. But also, the Royals have been beating everybody lately, so <laughs> they have. Yeah, they have. So I had to bump them up for this month. They that's had a good. Fair. They had a good couple weeks. So there's my thumbs down tier for you. Go ahead, Brig. So I blew off the three eight 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 rule. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I just don't care. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> the Angels are here for the same reasons you listed. They're, they're backsliding. I want the Marlins to be better than this. I want them to put up more of a fight than I'm seeing them put up. It's just not happening. Um, and the Phillies, are they're, be, they're getting to be that much better suddenly, which is awesome. Um, but nobody's going to catch Atlanta, so it doesn't even matter. The Marlins are currently 14 and a half behind Atlanta. Phillies are 10 and a half behind Atlanta, but the Marlins have lost eight of their last 10 where the Phillies have, are six and four in their last 10. So there's the comparison there. And then Cleveland's baseball team. I don't, I don't even want to talk about them. It's, it's not even, here's the thing. Listen, the reason my emoji tears are going this way this season, this point in the season is because some teams are very clearly still in the runnings and some teams are not and some teams are on the bubble and when i get to my poop tier i will explain a little further unless you just want to jump down there really quick brad because i'm on i'm i'm already monologuing yeah let's do it go ahead here's my poop tier instead of it being three which is the confined norm i have expanded it to however many freaking nine teams there are here And the reason I did, because I'm so upset at how these teams have managed not only the beginning of the season, but then the flipping trade deadline and the subsequent weeks we've had. So the Mets are an an utter astonishment in, in disappointment. Right, the A's could not be more disappointing if they. That's the thing is the A's aren't even supposed to be good, but they're like not even bad. They're awful. They're they've they're they've only won 32 games, Brad. And they've only won 17 at home. It's this is this is so bad. I don't understand. Everybody else on this list is bad for a lot of reasons. 
And they did not do enough, in my estimation, to shore up for next season. They've not given me any indication, real live indication, that they know what they're doing, have a plan, and are sticking to that plan. Now, that is the casual observation angle. I understand that there are things in the prospect pipeline I'm not looking into with all these teams. I understand that there are different contract extensions and free agency opportunities, club control. I got it. However, on brief observation at first blush, I did not see anything that gave me confidence in these teams moving forward from the deadline to now. And it is built upon all of the ridiculous tanking and, and loss mongering that I see going on up till now. So I am very upset at the, like it's, it's August. It shouldn't be this. The should the disparity should not be this wide yet. It shouldn't be and, this wide until September. And I know. And it is because we're only friggin' August 8th. So I am really, that's the source of my ire. Thanks. Right. So <laughs> I think you're absolutely spot on when you sent me your emoji tears to like make the graphics and stuff. I saw what you did and I was like, yep, I get it yeah. immediately. I understand it. Yeah. So I give you a hard time about breaking the rules, but I see exactly why you did because <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It's very fitting. Um, my poop tier, if I had, if I had broken the rules and said, I am a rule follower, Brig. Yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> would look very similar to yours. I have the A's, White Sox and Mets in my poop tier. Man, okay, um, listen. The Mets and the yeah. the A's need new friggin' channels. They need new. <laughs> we need to come up with new avenues to shove them down. Maybe because, so. I was actually no. thinking about this today. Maybe next year we do six, mm -hmm. and we have like, I don't know. We have like another like really worse. I don't know. Anyway, we got to come up with something else because this is yeah. I hope we never have to be this disappointed in clubs ever again. That's what I right. would say. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is the thing is the, the Royals have only won 36 games and that's after a sweep last week and having like a really good couple of weeks. Right. But the yeah. A's also had a good couple of weeks and they've only won 32 games. Right. Right. <laughs> like, right. How bad are these teams? And the, and the Royals have legitimate talent. I'm not saying the A's don't have legitimate talent. They have legitimately young talent. The Royals yeah. have Salvi Perez and Bobby Witt Jr., just to name two guys. Off the top of your head. Yes. For somebody who doesn't. And Zach Granke. Well, I don't think Zach, Zach Granke really cares anymore. Honestly. Yeah, but if he was in a team that cared, he'd care. Right. Yeah, you're right. If he oh. was still in Houston, he'd care. Yeah. Absolutely. Or back yeah. in Arizona. Can you imagine? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. No, it's unreal, though, how bad some of these teams are. But I, and the only reason I don't have the Royals in the poop is because A, I wanted to go with three teams and, and B, like I said, had a good couple weeks there towards the end of the month. Yeah. And the White Sox are just relegated there for the rest of the year. And so are the Mets because the White Sox don't care. And the Mets have just completely sold and are not even trying the rest of the year <gasps> or next, apparently. Wow. That was the most. Uh, oh. That was the most disappointing news when they came down and told Max Scherzer what they told him. Right. Especially when you have Francisco Lindor, who I understand has not been an all-star since he got to New York, but he is still a high-level player. He is. He's serviceable. And Pete Alonso. To say the least. Pete Alonso, who's a monster and has tons of club control still. Right. Uh, you should be trying to win with him while he's cheap. It's not going to last long. No, it's not. And I understand the Mets have bottomless pits for pockets. Like I understand that, that whole thing with, with Steve Cohen, whatever. But at the same time, though, it is important to save money where you can and spend it where you need to. And I don't know. It's like you looked confused when I said that, Brig. No, I I. I dribbled my oh. drink. <laughs> Spilling your and drink. Then I was, and then I was trying to decide if I was going to make a joke, if it was noticeable enough. It'd be like, I'm fomenting at the mouth. I'm so mad. I'm <laughs> just furious these mitts. I can't it believe it. Stupid mitts. 
<laughs> get a rumble back in I my day. See, get off my I'm lawn. Curious. I'm curious how many people place futures bets on the Mets going into the season because of who they had. Uh, how could they not? It's well, a total yeah, like, if, if you did, I would love to see a screenshot for anybody who's listening who did place a futures bet on the Mets. I would love to see it. Send it my way just yeah. so that I can give you a, a sad little fist bump because we've all been there. Yeah, we've all done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Holy crap. 